So let's do some arithmetic with fractions, starting with the addition of fractions. So to begin with, here's an idea to keep in mind. Suppose you have three apples and add two oranges. What do you have? You have three apples and two oranges. The important idea here is you can only combine terms when they are of the same type. So let's consider this addition of two fractions. And remember, how you speak influences how you think. This is not 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12. It's 3 twelfths and 4 twelfths. Since we're adding, we're going to put them together. So altogether, we have 3 plus 4, 7 twelfths, which we write as a fraction. And this leads to an important result. If two fractions have the same denominator, the sum will be a fraction with the same denominator and a numerator equal to the sum of the numerators. So let's take that addition again. And we see that the fractions have the same denominator. So by our theorem, we can add the numerators. And this gives us our final answer, 7 twelfths. What happens if our denominators are different? Again, how you speak influences how you think. We have 3 fourths and 2 thirds. If you read them this way, that reminds you that we have 3 of one type of thing and 2 of a different type of thing. So altogether, we do have 3 plus 2 equals 5 things, but they're not apples, they're not oranges, they're pieces of fruit which is something different entirely. So remember, since the fourths and thirds are different, we can't combine them meaningfully. Now we can't meaningfully add two things together if they're of different types. However, we can transform fractions into equivalent fractions. So remember that given any fraction a over b and any non-zero number n, a over b is the same as na over nb. So this fraction 3 fourths I can transform into an equivalent fraction by multiplying numerator and denominator by 2, or multiplying numerator and denominator by 3, or multiplying numerator and denominator by 4, and so on. And we can do the same thing to the fraction 2 thirds, multiplying numerator and denominator by 2, by 3, by 4, or by anything we want. So if we look at our possibilities, we see that 3 fourths is the same as 9 twelfths, and 2 thirds is the same as 8 twelfths. And because they have the same denominator, we can add the numerators. and get our sum, 17 twelfths. What made this work is that 12 was a common denominator. In our fraction 3 fourths, we could multiply the original denominator 4 by 3 to get 12, and in the fraction 2 thirds, we can multiply the original denominator 3 by 4 to get 12. And this suggests a useful idea. A common denominator of the fractions a over b and c over d is b d, the product of the denominators. So, for example, we'll find a common denominator for 1 sixth and 3 tenths, then add and, if possible, reduce the fractions. So our theorem says that a common denominator of the fractions can be found by multiplying the two denominators together. So a common denominator is 6 times 10. And so, if we take our fraction 1 sixth, because we want a denominator of 6 times 10, we have a missing factor. We have a 6, so we need a 10, so we'll multiply denominator by 10, and because we need to make sure that we have an equivalent fraction, we'll also multiply the numerator by 10. 
Now, here's a useful idea. Because we eventually want to reduce, and we can only reduce by removing common factors in numerator and denominator, it's worth leaving the denominator in factored form. So we'll leave our denominator as 6 times 10. What about the numerator? Well, because we're adding the two fractions, the numerator is going to be a sum. It will not be a product. So we might as well multiply out the product. 10 times 1 gives us 10. How about this other fraction, 3 tenths? Well, again, we want our denominator to be 6 times 10. And we have a 10, but we're missing a factor of 6. So we'll supply it. But we also have to multiply our numerator by 6. Again, we'll leave our denominator in the factored form 6 times 10, but multiply out the numerator. And now our fractions have the same denominator, 6 times 10, so we can add the numerators 10 plus 18. So we'll get a fraction with numerator 28 and denominator 6 times 10 which is the same denominator we started with. Arithmetic is bookkeeping, and it's always good to keep track of what we've actually done. This fraction we got by adding 1 sixth and 3 tenths. So let's write down that fact. And we do want to reduce, so here's where. Having that denominator in factored form is useful. We can ask whether 6 or 10 is a factor of 28, and the answer is... No, but because the numbers in our denominator are smaller, they're easier to factor. So 6 is 2 times 3, 10 is 2 times 5, and both of these 2s are also factors of 28. So we'll factor 28. We can remove our common factors. And now at the end of the problem, we can multiply the remaining factors together. So our numerator only has 7, our denominator 3 times 5, 15. Now sometimes when adding fractions we talk about the lowest common denominator, and that is the least common multiple of the denominators. And it's sometimes useful to find it, but it's never necessary. And since life is hard enough, we're not going to waste our time finding lowest common denominators because all we need are common denominators. And so remember that we can always find a common denominator by multiplying the denominators together.